Okay, we are back. Welcome back. Hello, Hello Michelle. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> we have Michelle Tekinder uh, with us here today, who will talk about enriching development processes with UX way of thinking. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The stage is yours. Thank you. How are you? Are you feeling well? I see Milos she's okay. So yeah, I guess uh, talking English is fine. No one wants Serbian and those kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Don't drink beer. <laughs> okay, so um, technology is, I mean, everywhere. Uh, it filled every corner of our lives. Uh, we wear it everywhere, uh, everywhere we turn around, uh, we see technology. Uh, so we, we are kind of used to it and uh, we take it for granted in most cases. And, um, but the thing is, uh, what technology allows us is uh, to change the way we are communicate and stay connected with our friends, family, and uh, the rest of the guys we won't want to mention. Uh, technology actually helps us stay uh, connected with other runners, let's say it's, it's help us stay fit, it collects data about our physical and mental health. Also, it influences on uh, how we are entertained, something that we didn't have a long time ago, it's available on just a few clicks, uh, like new movies, series, and games. Uh, actually, it has a biggest influence on uh, things like how we learn, how we acquire new knowledge, how we uh, learn new stuff, how we um, kind of uh, advance in our lives. Uh, and, I mean, it keeps track of everything, right? You know, whether we want it or, or, or not. So, uh, as consumers, we are highly, let's say, addicted to it. We spend uh, a large amount, a large portion of our daily life looking at screens, uh, mingling to the applications uh, and software in general. And we kind of want everything uh, right now, everything at that exact moment. We want things to happen right away and to allow us to do uh, things we want. And if uh, we have a great experience while using those softwares, uh, we kind of uh, fell in love with them. We notice every small detail around it. I mean, if the Facebook changes the icon, we kind of get frustrated. We kind of start hating it for a while, and then we go back again using it. But there is, a, there is another side uh, in those uh, technology stuff, which is uh, a makers, people who create software, people who influence how we learn, uh, people who influence how we uh, connect. And as a makers, we kind of... Um, try to stay uh, focused on tools and uh, everything around our work day to, to keep us uh, more effective, to, to align everything. We kind of get frustrated, especially if you are a front-end developer, you get frustrated around frameworks every day, which is kind of nice because it's dynamic. And uh, we kind of slip into that ecosystem using everything around and um, we kind of forget things, or we forget why we're actually doing this. So, I'm gonna start, uh, stop here for a second. Uh, my name is Michel, as you know. Actually, you saw that in application. Software again. And uh, I'm coming for a company w which is called Enjoying. Uh, I guess most of you guys know what Enjoying is. Uh, we are a software company based in Belgrade and uh, Niche. Those are our two development centers. We are actually part of a bigger group, NSM Engineering, which is a Switzerland's uh, development or software company based in Bar. And uh, I mean, let's do a little bit commercial. We have great clients. Uh, we make a great impact on people, people's lives. We connect uh, them We, you know, the usual commercial stuff. And uh, one of the uh, one of the things uh, we are special is we actually have a big influence on how people learn through one of 
our clients. Uh, Pearson is one of the biggest content providers or learning providers uh, at the wor in the world currently. Uh, Enjoying is doing a, a lot of stuff from them, and uh, I, as a part of the awesome Pearson team in Niche's office, I'm working as a um, uh, front-end technical lead for uh, e-commerce project based on hybrids. So I kind of have the biggest influence in my team. I mean, this is a brag, but no, I'm, I'm hoping they are not going to, to hate me after this. Uh, yeah, so end of the commercial. From this point on, we're going to answer some questions. Uh, not so long time ago, um, oh, I have a few kids, which you can't say from you know, my appearance, because it seems I'm young, but I advance a little bit faster than uh, most of younger guys in, in uh, my age. Uh, and I spend the, the usual evening routine with my older kids uh, playing some games on, um, on his personal um, tablet. Uh, uh, I think we were playing uh, Plants vs. Zombies or some kind of stuff like that. And as usual, as a really a good parent, I always uh, give, me the, give him that advantage to, uh, to beat me up in any game. So at, at the very end of our evening routine, he asked me one question, which is kind of uh, unusual for him because he, he has a completely different stupid questions, and this was kind of a game changer, at least for me at, at, at that moment. He asked me how the games are made. Daddy, I, I want to make games. And uh, as every uh, good parent, uh, I started avoiding uh, that uh, uh, speech and tried to put him to, you know, make a high score and go to bed. But he was uh, intentional in getting that answer as soon as possible, so I started speaking about uh, the important stuff, you know, how we made our software. So I started with, you know, uh, really important stuff. We all know who the unicorn designers are, who are, uh, you know, the wizards of uh, the ITs and uh, the, uh, engineering. So. Uh, but he didn't fell for, for that joke and continue asking the questions. So I started speaking about the boring stuff, hoping to interrupt his game and you know, put him to sleep earlier. And uh, actually, it's, uh, ma making software, it's, it's fairly easy. It's, if we strip, strip everything uh, except those, those two parts, I mean operational uh, clients approaching the uh, companies uh, and uh, other stuff, we are, okay, we can boil down to these two main pillars, let's call it like that, uh, of, of development or the software design. And, uh, you know, there is a first iteration, a second iteration, let's call it that way. The first iteration is actual, actually the design. We all uh, work with our friends who are designers and, uh, uh, you know, those kind of unicorns. And uh, yeah, we all know how the design process starts. We, we gather or we allow them to gather in uh, conference rooms wearing uh, funny mustaches, uh, hipster clothing, and beanies uh, around their tables, you know, st making stickers to, to our walls and uh, doing their stuff. And we you know, laugh about it until our, actually the engineering part comes, uh, comes up. But the thing is, uh, they really do something let's call it important or special when designing software is. They usually gather information uh, uh, defining the problems about those specific software or uh, the client's requirements they have. They collect information of uh, users, of uh, systems, of uh, you know, everything around the, 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 let's call it the end uh, clients and users or end users in general. They then brainstorm, analyze, create ideas, uh, you know, point some stickering around, writing on the uh, whiteboards and stuff. And uh, they create something which is called personas. Personas are, let's call it a fictive person who we would like to use our software and to whom we are going to tighten the, the everything around, uh, around him. They then design the solutions 
and they start designing the user, uh, user interface stuff at the, not at the beginning, but at the later stages. So they design solutions, then uh, mingle with clients and users, gather feedbacks, uh, go back and improve if something was wrong. And yeah, most of the time they're doing the, the, the really, really important stuff in that software uh, engineering part. And uh, this is Nerd and Nina. Uh, Nerd and Nina is a kind of persona that some group of designers uh, created according to the uh, analytics and uh, information they gathered around uh, some specific, uh, from clients and some specific uh, software they are going to use. And uh, as you can see here, it's, I mean, no one is called Nerd and Nina. I, I guess you know that this is a dummy person. Uh, but it has some important stuff, such as demographic, stack, goals, frustrations, reading habits, and favorite books, uh, which I guess is important from that specific persona, or at least for that kind of a software that's going to be made. Uh, I want to remember, if all of you remember who the nerdy Nina is, because we are going to go back to, to her later. So, now the fun stuff. When the fun stuff begins, we usually... Uh, are approached by designers, and uh, they give us their mock-ups, uh, their books, you know, with stuff to, for us to learn, and uh, they give us, let's say, in designs in general, and they want us to code or engineer those parts. Uh, as every good engineer, whenever the, our process starts, we started by yelling, we have a shorter time frames, we have which depends on budgets, which depends on uh, how much time designers spend doodling around in their sketches. And we yell about the client requirements, the usual uh, boring stuff, and uh, we start building our technical stacks at some later stages like, like designers do. And uh, usually all of technical related is uh, given to younger de developers or e engineers by summoning the older, wiser engineer guys, the unicorns or whatever uh, creature those specific companies uses. And then they decide uh, what kind of technology are we going to use in, uh, in, in for, for this specific project. So most of the time, we fell into the trap of something which is called hype-driven development or a stack overflow driven development. It's the same thing, but it's, it has a kind of a unique name. And we decide upon technologies and everything uh, influenced by uh, current industry hype and trends. Let's say we build something and we have a unicorn front-end developer who is actually going to use React, whether this project is a good fit or no. And uh, those kind of problems keep piling uh, until we create something I guess, okay looking and something which works, at least at the beginning. And yeah, that's the exact point where we think the software design is over, or at least our part. Most of the time, no one see, sees any problems here. I mean, we took uh, dummy stuff for designers, we converted it with our magician uh, stuff and uh, powders and everything, and we created a software which works, which is kind of magic by itself. But uh, then, in later stages, something starts happening, and, you know, as usual, something went wrong. So, let me tell you one story about one time I al uh, almost got fired and uh, got my client broke, uh, just to illustrate how stupid things can people uh, do. In few, a few, few years ago, I was working for one uh, also uh, software company uh, here in Serbia. Uh, we had a client uh, who was in the US, I think, and we, he approached us with the idea of creating a social network for artists. I'm not going to tell you what kind of artist it is, because it's, the idea was fine, and by those papers I signed, I, I couldn't talk about it. But yeah, it, it was artists. And, uh, you know, we, uh, he already had one uh, application 
uh, for Android and iOS platform. And uh, he was willing to change the company because the previous one created too much bugs and issues which couldn't be solved. So he thought uh, that we are better and uh, we can provide them better service and for less money, right? Because we are from Balkans. So we, as every other um, software company, we started talking about the money. And you know, wh while those uh, times passed and the operationals did everything to, to took the money from, from that poor guy, uh, we started talking about the, the refactoring the application, you know, the new designs, uh, different approach, and because the, uh, the idea was to refactor the whole application and uh, use as much of logic possible, which is stupid thing, but, and invest in designs and make it pretty. So we started doing that. We, we give them a short deadline. We give him, uh, uh, you know, lower prices than a competition. And uh, he also accepted us right away and we started working. So after a while we got with the uh, first version of an application, of course, without bugs. And we approached them and asking for a feedback. Everything went well. Our QAs, uh, QA guys did a great job. They tested the application throughout uh, from one to the other side. And yeah, we had a meeting with them. Everything worked fine and he was happy. So since he was happy, our management was happy. We were happy. We left. Everyone left and we ended up work day and go home. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the issues uh, didn't stop, you know, reporting to us. We, we had uh, issues uh, which are kind of cosmetic. You know, the, this button is not two pixels on the left and the usual front end stuff or the UI stuff. But some of the uh, issues are occurring uh, from a previous version of application. So, well, I mean, last speaker spoke about uh, code reviews, uh, the Borazarski code reviews. Uh, and uh, we also did that, like any other good colleagues. So, uh, we asked for a feedback from the users. We asked to give the screenshots, we asked for uh, 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 videos and uh, you know for to e explain them what's wrong, but uh, it looks like the artists are good at creating stuff, but explaining not so well. So we had a problem to click with them and uh, to gather the feedback. We want to be able to distinguish what's actually an art of explaining what's wrong and what's actually a problem. So uh, we spent few weeks staving over time and uh, uh, working until late in the night and we couldn't see uh, we couldn't ca catch what the problem was so the thing was uh, we did everything well we did everything we we did with any project before that and uh, everything was flawless client was happy we were happy test passed, uh, iOS accepted, and uh, Play Store accepted our applications. Everything was like it, it should be. But, you know, the, the users keep uh, yelling about those situations where the application just stops working, you know, there is no feedback from, from the application. Uh, like any other good colleague, uh, I told them everyone can go home and I spent some uh, additional overtime to try to catch the bugs along with pizzas, beer, and the rest of the good stuff uh, in the overtime. And uh, also couldn't, couldn't manage to, 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 to wrap my head around and couldn't manage to, to see what's actually really wrong if there is something wrong. But in some exact point at that night, uh, while I was rounded with uh, a lot of uh, devices from our uh, device lab, from the QA team, um, I started, you know, going through the usual routine of QA teams, uh, going through personas, uh, sorry, going to uh, customer journeys, trying to register to, you know, share my status, to upload a picture and everything. But, you know, everything worked fine until one moment when uh, electricity went out. And, of course, every technical company has a backup. So, while the, the, the backup was running, I noticed that I was connected to a Wi-Fi, 
and uh, you know, I, I didn't receive any packages from the internet provider since it looks like he also got out of the electricity but didn't have a backup. And my data plan was, uh, well, it didn't kick in, so I was kind of stuck in the limbo having connected to the internet but not having an internet. And at that exact moment, I figured out why uh, those issues appeared because like any other software engineer, we cut corners and uh, we don't want to think about uh, uh, use cases which are not, you know, common. Like we thought, okay, we have a client which comes from US, actually from uh, Los Angeles. I mean, they have electricity, they have internet, they have cars, you know, they have a lot of stuff. So, you know, figuring out that in some exact point the electricity will went out and we should implement the logic for kind of telling us what's wrong, uh, we failed. And uh, I, of course, I never told anyone about that. I told them that I caught a bug. I, you know, highlighted that in pull requests. I created a big documentation to explain to my uh, bosses what's happening. Of course, for the client, I sent some pictures of cats and uh, regular fine stuff from the internet and tell him that we got it. So, how, the question was how we solve this at the very end. The thing is, uh, while we were you know, thinking about the technical stack and usual programming stuff, we forgot to think about uh, users. You know, we forgot to think about how users interact with application. We forgot to think about how, uh, uh, in which terms and how users in general use uh, our applications. So we went back and I asked for management to rethink our routine and to create something different, something, you know, more uh, edgy and agile. And I did this. I changed how our uh, process are going. So at first here we had design process and we have development process. And most of the time designers are doing their stuff, developers are doing their stuff, the feature pops up and it's available in the uh, application. With this here, I actually didn't allow them to have free time, which they bragged about. But I kind of incorporated design in development as it should be. Designer, I created pair program, pair development, or pair designing, let's call it that way. And uh, I actually forced them to think about each other's duties. You know, designers think about the users and uh, the nice stuff, and development think about the React. And uh, everything went well. I was thinking that we will fail, but uh, that didn't happen. And uh, yeah, at that exact point, magic starts happening, which was, you know, I was really happy about it. Uh, my boss was really happy about it, and uh, the, the gift looked fine, so I put it there just to, you know, add some time to, to my talk. Um, the question is, how should we build our stacks? As uh, someone who started as a designer a long time ago, and then forcefully, uh, I was pushed into development because, like any other designer sickness, no one can code this better than me, and no one can imagine this feature better than me. I started uh, looking at diagnostics and uh, the boring stuff which is brought by us, by the company which looks everything. And I started uh, thinking about technical stacks in these terms. I started looking at users. How old are they? From which country they are coming? Uh, which is the level of technical knowledge they possess, uh, which devices they use, uh, are there newer devices, older devices, how much CPU power they have, how much RAM, uh, what's the battery capacity, and those kind of stuff. Um, also, I started looking into the internet availability, if they have Wi-Fi over, because we figured out that in Los Angeles there are certain parts of the city that doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi at all, and the data plan doesn't work, so those are specific uh, moments in the previous story where our user, user failed or application failed the users because they were commuting from one place to the other and lost the internet connection. Uh, I started looking at local internet speed, which kind of I get obsessed and sometimes sad because I see that some of the technical advanced um, countries like US failed uh, and the Serbia won, which was 
zero one for, for the Balkans. Uh, and then started looking at when and how they use software and that those apps. Not only for the, the previous example, but for everything I use, whether it's a feature or it's, it's a new, new uh, software. And basically things I was ignoring all of the time, those habits. Do they, you know, when they charge phones, when they have batteries, uh, do they use um, uh, browsers or do they use native stuff? So once I did that and created documentation and forced everyone to uh, think about it, eventually our collaboration got better. Uh, designers and developers became friends. Uh, our development circles were shortened. Uh, we had uh, faster delivery uh, circles. Uh, less issues appeared eventually. Uh, we have more time to uh, invest in improvement in, um, in uh, uh, education and in learning uh, of our new developers and our own. And of course, we have a happier clients. But there was a problem to, to explain to the management how I managed to, uh, for the same amount of time, I, I, you know, I uh, put there a learning and the improvement. And from that point on, uh, that was the kind of highlight of my career, should I be fired because I created software for less time and for less money, or should I be promoted? Eventually, neither happened, and uh, I got two days um, yearly uh, off. So yeah, this is something which in general is quoted million, millions of times. And I was always like, OK, Steve Jobs did this, and did, you know, good old Steve. But this sentence is so true, and it's so kind of has impacts on, impact, uh, impact on everything. And uh, as an engineer, I don't know how many of you are engineers. I know Milan, Miloš is one. But yeah, girls in front also, yeah. So uh, you guys should and always take care of your users. You should always look at how something works in terms of your end users. If you have something to test, don't you know, take your fancy iPhone from the pocket with data plans of the poor country and do you know, the development stuff. Go outside, you know, uh, use Wi-Fi, use the rest of the things you usually don't use, because not always uh, technology is everywhere, but it's, it's not aligned for each person in the world. So, in general, I would like to stop with that just to shorten my talk because previous one took a few minutes for mine. Uh, and uh, I would like to go to question if there is any. If there is no questions, we are going to hang out uh, at the enjoying booth during the day. You can stop by and ask anything. We are also hiring. You can look at jobs. Uh, we have pinball machine, so you can play you know, pinball if you want. Uh, and yeah, let's begin. Hopefully there will be no questions, but yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michelle.